How do you tell when a broken stock has finally turned the corner? That's the big question with Twilio, the software company that makes it incredibly easy for developers to create and manage reliable communications processes via the cloud. Pretty much any app that sends you text messages is using their platform. Now, Twilio came public with a bang over the summer, rocketing from $15 to $28 and change in the first day of trading, then continuing to surge, climbing as high as $70 at the end of September. But the Twilio IPO is what I call a sliver deal. They sold a small amount of stock, and then once the lockup expired, the company did a big, big, big 7 million share secondary offering on October 20th, priced at $40, which happened to be $4 below the last sale. And even then, after the stock had come down so much, it sent it to free fall. All the additional supply caused the demand thing to trade well. I mean, darn thing to trade all the way down to 32 bucks. So down eight bucks from where they placed that secondary. However, Twilio has been a broken stock, people, not a broken company. We know that because they reported last night and the results, they were just simply phenomenal. The company delivered a smaller than expected loss with higher than anticipated revenue up 62% year over year. That's, inc- that's amazing. And even better, management raised their full year forecast. It was dynamite. Yet after rallying nearly three bucks this morning, the stock ultimately closed down a buck. I told you this is a really hard market for the speculative, speculative stocks. There's a mountain of supply of Twilio out there, it seems. So has this stock come down enough that it can get its mojo back thanks to these strong results? Let's take a closer look with Jeff Lawson. He's the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Twilio. Find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Lawson, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Great to be back. All right, Jeff. Uh, Let's cut right to it. This uh, September quarter was just an unbelievable growth. Active customer count growth, 44%. This was the fastest growth of any of the companies I follow in tech. How were you able to add so many during that very short, constrained period? Well, this is really the power of our platform business model. Our goal is to have Twilio in the tool belt of every developer in the world so that when the need for communications arises at work and they need to solve some business problem with communications, they say, aha, I know how to do that. It's Twilio. They pull us out. They start building an application. And as they take those applications from that prototype to a beta to a production application deployed to their end users around the world, well, Twilio's usage grows and we earn more customers. Well, I think we have a great opportunity here because there's something that's happened next Tuesday that might allow people to totally understand what you do. And I'm just going to hand it over to you to talk about Hello Vote. Yeah, Hello Vote is a really neat customer of ours, part of our Twilio.org customer base. Hello Vote help, it's a bot that's deployed over SMS and Facebook Messenger, powered by Twilio, that helps people get registered to vote and also to make sure that they haven't been accidentally uh, removed from the voter rolls. And so you can text in uh, or uh, hit them on Facebook Messenger and in about less than a minute, you can actually make sure that you're registered to vote and in states where the deadline hasn't passed, you can even get registered to vote. Really cool customer of ours, really excited to partner with them to bring hello vote to uh, to the voters of the United States. Now, there was some research. It's very funny. I was reading a piece. I'm not going to mention the guy's name because I think he, he's got the wrong emphasis. But he said, well, there are a lot of positives, but a negative WhatsApp, which obviously Facebook, because revenue contribution continues to decline 7% of revenues versus 9.2%. I read this entirely opposite. I read it that you are taking on so much business that whoever is a big customer is not going to be per se as big because the pie is growing so fast. Yeah, I mean, we look at the variable customers, of which WhatsApp is the largest customer in that variable bucket. It's eight customers out of our 34,000 plus uh, who drive now 10% of our revenue, is uh, sort of gravy on top of our core business, which is those base customers, that 34,000 set of, of businesses that use Twilio for a wide variety of use cases. That's why we wake up in the morning and the variable customer, of which WhatsApp is the biggest, is just gravy on top. And we're actually really happy about the fact that our base customers are growing so nicely, our base this revenue grew 75% year over year, and that's really the reason why we're all uh, in business and get out of bed in the morning. All right. Now, I like these new great cases, uh, great use cases, because, again, they help our viewers understand when they're buying Twilio what it means. The idea of the anonymous communication seems brilliant to me. We've all kind of understood it. You tell us where you are in it. 
Yeah, absolutely. We power anonymous communications for many applications that uh, that you may use, whether it's you know Uber or Lyft or many of these uh, companies where you communicate with another person, but you don't really want your personal information, your phone number exposed to the other party. And so what that is is a Twilio phone number that when you make a call to that phone number, it actually forwards the call to the other party, and we anonymize and secure that communication in the middle. And so our customers are using Twilio both for anonymous voice, uh, also for anonymous texting. You can text that phone number, and they will forward that text and proxy all that communication, ultimately creating a safer experience for the consumer and also a safe marketplace uh, between the uh, service provider, like a car driver, and that consumer who's riding. And how about the call center anonymous use? That also seems like a, something that could be much bigger, maybe bigger than the biggest application you have. Yeah, call centers are a fantastic use case for Twilio, and we've been seeing a lot of great customers, whether it's in our uh, solution provider marketplace, where we've got customers like Zendesk, or directly to enterprises, where we have customers like ING Bank, who are using Twilio to power their global call centers as they're looking to modernize those applications. And we had a number of uh, neat enterprise logo wins uh, this quarter that were also in the call center space. Now, I wanted to point you, you did the equity offering, and we're spending a lot of time these days, I, and I know I said this to you off camera, talking about companies and what they're doing beyond just making money, because we're all, we've got a lot of younger people watch the show, and they're trying to figure out where to work. Not every share of this most recent offering was sold by shareholders or by companies. There was a .org that sold the stock. Where does that money go to? Yeah, Twilio.org, well, as a, as a quick refresher, we committed last year 1% of the equity of our company uh, to uh, sustainably fund Twilio.org, our initiative to use our people and our technology to do good in the world. And so as a part of that pledge, uh, Twilio.org had a small amount of equity that they sold in our follow-on offering in order to be able to make grants and to fuel communications that bring hope, power, and freedom in the world. And we're really excited for what uh, we can now do with, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, equity and, and with the good that we're trying to do. And this is all part of your 111 uh, decision, committed 111 to, in order to be able to make people feel a little bit bigger than just working for Twilio, right? Exactly. I think that, you know, especially employees want to work for a company that has a mission that's bigger than just making money. I mean, obviously, we're here to build great products and to power great customers and, uh, and to make money. But I think a lot of workers, especially millennials, uh, are looking for more purpose behind what they do. And as, as employees have many options for where they work, it feels great to work for a company who has a mission beyond just the pursuit of profits. Uh, and so I think that uh, creating a holistic company and the uh, culture of the company that is around great business performance, but also tying that performance to then our ability to do good in the world, where the more valuable our equity is, the more we have to be able to do uh, work with Twilio.org, which then creates a stronger company, which creates more valuable equity. It's a great uh, virtuous cycle of creating commercial value and then creating uh, good in the world value. Oh. And uh, we're really excited to be uh, have made that a part of our company. All right, let's leave it at that. Congratulations on Accelerating Revenue Growth Quarter. Terrific job, Jeff Lawson, Banner CEO and Chairman of Twilio. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Jim. Bye. Speculative stock, unbelievable business, growing so fast. These are the kinds of things that if you have some mad money, you got to buy some stock in this kind of stock. Stay with me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.